Welcome back comrades, it is me Matsmus. I appreciate you being on this video so thank you very much. Today we are discussing some more hardcore Russian military hardware and aircraft in particular. This is the TU-95 Bear and what a fitting name for a mammoth platform. This aircraft is incredible and the fact that it uses turboprops still to this day is very fascinating to me because I actually work within the aviation industry with turboprop aircraft. So. Talking about this aircraft makes me actually really, really happy because, uh, you know, it's something I actually know a little bit about, you know, jet engines, yeah, not so much, turboprops definitely do. So the Tupolev Tu-95 has been built in many variants, but was originally constructed as a strategic intercontinental heavy payload bomber aircraft. Of course, we still see it today flying around testing the borders of international waters and airspace with F-22s, F-16s or Eurofighters flying beside them, giving them a little wave and saying, yes, we know you're here, you can go home now. One of the fascinating things about this aircraft for me is its age and how long it's lasted through the ages. You know, that's no real stranger to Russian military equipment, hardware and aircraft. However, this really is still fighting strong. It's had some upgrade packages as multiple different variants. But as always, folks, this is purely my opinion. Please don't take it for word of mouth. You know, um, the resources that I have found this information come from multiple different areas. So please let me know if I make any mistakes, and I hope you enjoyed today's video on the TU-95 Bear. So the aircraft has been built in multiple variants, from the TU-95 to the TU-142, but was originally constructed as a strategic intercontinental heavy payload, understatement, bomber aircraft. The Tu-95s were designed and built at the Topolov Joint Stock Company Aviation Plant in Moscow. The first flight of the Tu-95 was in 1954. This beast is old folks, I wasn't kidding, and entered service in 1956. The Tu-95 has a maximum level speed of 650 km an hour, almost sending it like rocket speed. It is insanely fast, and that's pretty much why they wanted to use it, because it was very capable of being able to carry long-range nuclear weapons and launching them at incredible speeds. It also allowed for test beds of certain other aircraft being used and dropped from underneath its belly. The Americans tried the same thing with aircraft, jet fighter aircraft, in the day, but, uh, you know, that really wasn't its primary focus. The bomber's capability allowed it to test the airspace of many different nations over and over again, including, obviously, NATO with the Americans, the Brits, Germany, and other, you know, Western world nations. The reason is because it can fly for such long distances. The aircraft had an extremely impressive unrefueled combat radius of 6,400 kilometers. With only one in-flight refueling, the aircraft has a combat radius of 8,200 kilometers. The aircraft regularly made long-range patrols near NATO and US airspace until the end of the Cold War, and still to this day, they're still pushing the limits on trying to test certain aerial boundaries. In August 2007, President Putin announced that the Russian Air Force would resume long-range patrols by the Tu-95 and Tu-160 strategic bombers after a 15-year gap. In July 2007, two Topolov Tu-95 aircraft headed towards Scotland and were met by UK RAF Tornado aircraft. In August 2007, two Topolov Tu-95 aircraft flew towards the US and air and naval exercises near the US military base at Guam. That same month, two UK RAF Typhoon aircraft were scrambled to intercept the Russian Air Force Tu-95 over the North Atlantic. You can see where we're going with this. The Russian Air Force's 37th Army Air operates the Tu-95MS, which is the Tu-95M55 Bear H. In January 2010, two Russian Tu-95MS Bear strategic bombers executed a routine patrol over the Arctic Ocean for the Engels Air Base. The aircraft spent around 14 hours in the air. This goes to show its true capability of being very capable of doing long-range missions and continuing on that mission if necessary to go to extreme distances. The Indian Air Force actually has its own Tu-142 Mark E aircraft known as the Bear F Mod 3 export variant as well. The aircraft entered service in the Indian Air Force in 1986 and is equipped for maritime patrol and anti-surface warfare. The Tu-95 houses a large bomb bay at the center of gravity of the aircraft, which is immediately after the wing's central torsion box. The Tu-95 MS Bear H is capable of carrying six KH-55 Granite, or NATO designation AS-15 Kent, nuclear-armed long-range cruise missiles with a range of 3,000 kilometers. The missiles are mounted on a catapult launch drum in the bomb bay. Alternatively, the aircraft can carry 14 KHSD anti-ship missiles with a range of 600 km or 8 conventionally armed KH-101 air launch cruise missiles which have a range of 3,000 km. 
The rear gun compartment is fitted with a twin barrel GSH 23L cannon. Really not used at this point anymore, but it used to be able to engage targets that were trying to follow up on its rear in the old days in the 1960s and 70s, where there was the potential to be able to engage aircraft that were trying to, in some regard, engage from close distance onto the aircraft. The entry to the rear turret is separate from the main crew entry and is via a ventral hatch, which made it quite scary if you were a rear tail gunner because there's no way anyone's going to get you. You are totally on your own until landing. The aircraft is equipped with a weather radar, navigation and bombing radar, and a gunfire control radar. Infrared sensors of the MAC UTIR sensor missile approach warning system are also installed under the nose sections and on top of the surface of the fuselage above the wings. Electronic countermeasure pods are pylon mounted on the port and starboard side of the tail gunner station and fairings are visible on each side of the weather radar on the nose section. The antenna of the terrain bounce jammer, which attracts approaching radar guided missiles, points down towards the ground and reflects signal away from the aircraft. They are installed on the underside of the nose and on the rear section of the fuselage. Radar warning receiver antenna are installed on the fins and on both sides of the front fuselage. The APP-50 chaff and flare decoy dispensers are installed on the main landing gear doors, and trust me when I say this, there is a lot of them. Up to 60 packs of these dispensers can be placed onto this aircraft to pretty much diverse any missile away from it from probably 2,000 different fighter jets. I'm just kidding, but that is a lot of dispensers to pop out if it needs to, but it makes complete sense. This aircraft isn't going anywhere fast, it cannot outmaneuver, out, you know, perform any other fighter jet, so it needs a lot of countermeasures if it does, by some chance, get engaged with long-range missiles. The aircraft is an all-metal construction, large high-performance aircraft with a distinctive high aspect ratio all-swept wing at around 30 degrees. The fuselage is of circular cross-section, very similar to that of the B-52, with a larger diameter of 2.9 meters. The fuselage houses three pressurized compartments. The wings in the tailplane and the leading edges are fitted with anti-icing heating and the aircraft carries three life rafts. This is very important folks because unlike the B-52, this aircraft is primarily flying into the naval waters or Arctic oceans of northern Russia to fly and scoot around to test the waters of say Canada, the UK, you know where I'm going with this. The most impressive thing for me about this entire platform is the fact that it has turboprop engines. And we're not kidding when I talk about turboprop engines here. I know turboprop engines and these things are beasts. It is powered by four Samara Kutsanov NK-12 MP turboprop engines, each rated at 11,033 kilowatts. The engines are fitted with eight blades, two sets of four contra-rotating propellers, type AV-60N with a diameter of 5.6 meters. These things hum and they drag this aircraft extremely quickly. The aircraft does have four wing tanks and three tanks in the fuselage with two in the center and one in the rear. The total fuel capacity is 95,000 liters. It has a flight hose and drag refueling capability and the refueling probe is above the nose and fitted with a flush lighting for nighttime operation. The information friend or foe antenna is also installed above the refueling probe. The engines drive GSR 18,000M generators for Type 12 SAM 55 accumulator batteries which provide DC power. The AC power is provided by converters and the four engine driven AC generators. A gas turbine auxiliary power unit is installed in the dorsal fin. And you wonder why? Just to get the power to energize these things must be incredible. The starter motors must be the size of me to get these things running up. They are technically jet engines, folks. You're not talking about, you know, piston engines. These things are jet engines powered highly, highly efficiently to provide a ton of thrust to get these things flying not only fast, but really, really high. The TU-95 Bear can climb at a rate of 10 meters per second, and the maximum cruise speed of the aircraft range from 710 km an hour to 920 km an hour depending on the variant. The TU-95 is the world's only swept wing turboprop ever to enter full combat service. Its distinct engines, each with the two counter-rotating propellers, make it the fastest propeller-driven aircraft built. The original TU-95 was designed to carry the nuclear bombs to targets at the continental US, and the Russian deemed it would be more logical to use turboprops than it would be to jet engines. Later versions carried those cruise missiles for the exact same standoff missions and once again the same basis was used. Although other bombers Russians can use, they primarily use this one purely for its standoff capability from long ranges and the ability for it to fly for an extremely long time without having to refuel. 
Because of the engine powering these gigantic 18 foot long blades that spin in opposite directions, it makes them more efficient but also creates enormous noise. The Tu-95 is considered to be one of the noisiest aircraft ever in service. It's even claimed that US submarines can hear the aircraft flying overhead through their sonar domes while still underwater. Western fighter pilots have also shepherded Bairds over international airspace, have reported being able to hear its turboprops above the sound of their own jet engines. The Bears' original role was to drop free-falling nuclear bombs over the enemy territory. The Bears' smart design allowed it to be adapted over and over again in the different roles that were defined. There are many different roles for this aircraft and I'm not going to list them all right now. There are just far too many to talk about. There was a modified Bear that dropped one of the most powerful explosives ever devised, the Tsar Bomb. It was a nuclear bomb tested by the Soviets in 1961. The hand-picked crew dropped the 50 megaton warhead over the Arctic island of Novaya Semlya. The bomb was delayed with an aid of a parachute so the aircraft could actually get to a safe distance. The force of the explosion was equivalent to 10 times of all the explosives expended in World War II. This caused the bomber to fall over a kilometre in height, even though it was nearly 45 kilometres away, or 28 miles, when the device detonated. Interestingly enough, the Soviets even toyed with the idea of a nuclear-powered bear. One heavily modified example, the Tu-95 LAL, was fitted with a small reactor and acted as a flying testbed. The plane made over 40 flights, though most were with the reactor shut down. The main concern was whether the aircraft could take off with the extra weight of the shielding needed to protect the crew from the effects of radiation. The quest to build a nuclear bomber ended up being shelved in the 1960s, but the flights had proven it was actually quite technically feasible. One of more than the 500 bears built since the 1950s, at least 55 of them are still thought to be serving in the Russian Air Force, while more of the maritime versions fly for the Russian and Indian navies. Just like the US Air Force's B-52s, the bear have proven very difficult to replace. Upgrades and refits are likely to keep these Cold War era behemoths in the air to at least 2040. Andrea Tupolev would be extremely proud. So folks, that is the beautiful Tu-95 Russian Bear. And you know, I could talk about this aircraft for a very, very long time, but th honestly, it's just, there's so much different variation, so many different systems that's been put on this aircraft. I would be just wasting your time discussing them all because I was reading through and just the configurations this thing has, so many different variants, it's unbelievable. I could list a million different number configurations and I'd probably still not hit the number of configurations or variants this aircraft has. I have to say that I am extremely impressed that a turboprop aircraft is still being utilized today in the configuration that it's in right now. The fact that it is able to produce such fast speeds, high altitudes and heavy payloads with those engines baffles me. It really does. It completely baffles me and it's extremely impressive. You know, the United States has gone to the jet engine era and have stuck with it ever since. And I've got to admit, I'm kind of proud that the Russians have stuck with turboprop. I really would love to see one of these in front of me firing up all four of those massive engines, all eight of those blades firing up. If they're noisy, I want to hear it. You know, when you stand in front of a Lancaster bomber and all your engines fire up, it sends the hair on the back of my uh, spine tingling a little bit. I can't imagine seeing these things. Just the length of those engines, the amount of mechanics and engineering that must have gone in to produce that kind of turboprop, pretty impressive stuff. Guys, I'd love to hear your opinion on this aircraft and what you think of it. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and a comment. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, and if you want to support my channel, go check out my Patreon account. The link is in the description box below. And thank you to everybody who has been subscribing and uh, donating towards that platform. I really appreciate it. If you want to be notified of any upcoming military videos or any videos in general for my channel, go to my... Uh, little bell button beside the subscribe button hit it and you'll be notified for future videos thanks again for joining me folks have a great day bye bye